Hi friends, today is going to be my TBR takedown for the month of July. If you are new here, the TBR takedown is a game that I'm playing trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from a really high number to something manageable, probably around 50. Also, if you're new here, you wouldn't know this, but at the beginning of 2019, my physical unread TBR shelf started out at 240, and it wasn't much better at the beginning of this year, though I don't remember exactly what the number was. So at the beginning of July, my starting number was 186 unread books, and we're going to go into purchases, and one of them doesn't count, which is excellent, and all of the books that I read this month do count as coming off, so also excellent. Um, I'm ready. Let's do it. The first book that I hold this month is The Fantasy Fiction Formula by Deborah Chester. This does not count. This is just a writing craft book. But I wanted to mention it because if you are one of my writing friends or AuthorTube subscribers, then you should know that I am reading this book as part of the Craft Chat book club hosted by Laura Wrights. And so on her channel on August 30th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be talking about this book. So if you want to pick it up and read it with us, there's still plenty of time to do that. And we will be talking about the book and if we felt like it was informational, what kind of things we took from it. If you don't read the book, which I typically have not been reading the books that they've been doing for the Craft Chats, but I've been showing up to the craft chat because then you kind of get an idea of what people can take from away from the book and if it's something you want to invest your money and your time in. So even if you don't read it but you want to know if it's a good craft book, come jump in with the chat because then you'll know if it's something that you should invest your time and money in. I will link Laura's channel down below. So the next book that we're going to talk about is Where Dreams Descend by Janelle Angelis. This was the Alcrate exclusive edition from June and I've never gotten Alcrate before but I was really excited about this book and I heard a little rumor that they were going to have early releases of it in June. So I subscribed to the box just to get the June <laughs> A box and to get this beautiful cover. It is the actual book. It is an embossed book. There's no dust jacket. It's gorgeous. Um, yeah, really happy with it. Uh, still haven't read it, so obviously I was super excited. Uh, this book comes out, uh, I believe, August 25th, so it is an early release, and I do have a pretty copy of it, and I'm sorry that if you were really excited about it and would have read it by now, and I haven't. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. <laughs> this book, I'm not 100% sure what it is about, but I know that it is set at a circus and it's like a battle to be the leader of the circus and there's a bunch of death-defying acts and there's murders going on. Maybe not murders, maybe just people missing, but usually if a bunch of people are missing, some of them are dead. So probably gonna be some murder. A bunch of mayhem, a bunch of magic. Um, I have heard it compared to like a Phantom of the Opera type deal, um, like a masquerade. Super excited. And because I'm a glutton for punishment, I just continued getting out crate boxes. So I also have the July book, which is The Goddess in the Machine by Laura Beth Johnson, and it is beautiful. I don't know that I love this more than the original cover. I think it's just so similar that it's like, mm but it does have these pretty gold sprayed edges. So, I mean, I guess. So this book follows a girl who wakes up thousands of years after she was put into a cryogenic sleep. She was just supposed to be asleep for like a hundred years and it's a thousand years plus later on. And she's in this cave and as she wakes up, she realizes that everyone that she knows has since long since died. And the ancestors of the people that she was related to, her family, her friends, they all believe her to be a deity. They believe that she is this goddess that has the power to save their dying planet. It also follows a male prince, as most princes are, and he has kind of been exiled from the royal family. He wants to overthrow his father, who he believes is doing a disservice to his people and to the planet itself and he wants to find the goddess and use her basically for his own schemes and the book follows them 
um, trying to figure out what secrets, why she woke up so late, um, what secrets he's hiding, what's really happening with the planet that they're on. She really just wants to go back to Earth, but does Earth still exist? And is it, if it does, is it any better than the planet that she's on? A whole thing. So excited to read this as well. I'm just going to put it on the list and roll with it. So those are the three books that I hauled. Again, one does not count. So that takes us to 188. Let's get into the books that I read. As always, I will not be going through all of these and giving you my full review. If you would like to see that, I will link in the description box below, as well as in the cards, my wrap-up video for the month. My reads for the month were The Opposite of Loneliness by Marina Keegan, Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo, and An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. So 188 minus 3 is 185, so my new total is 185, which is only one book down from last month but at least we're going in the right direction. Did not have any DNFs or unhauls, I should mention. So, I mean, 185 isn't terrible. It is what it is, y'all. I'm just working through it. I'm working through it. I've been doing really good with my 2020 books, though. I've been keeping my books that I've been purchasing in 2020 separately from the others, and I have maybe 20 or so. Um, I'm not doing too bad with those. Also helping with that is that I am no longer purchasing from Book Outlet. I'm no longer purchasing from Book of the Month. I am trying really hard not to buy from Amazon. There are some things that I've still been getting from Amazon, things that are harder to find or things that are just exponentially more expensive buying from indie. But for the most part, I've been buying from bookshop.org. I've been buying from my local bookstore, Wheatberry. I have done obviously some purchasing through Alcrate. There have been some other indie bookstores. I think I've done a book depository buy earlier this year. Yes, because I got the paperback editions of the Witchland series by Susan Denner. Those were book depository. Um, I've tried, been trying to buy local and buy from smaller shops versus buying from Amazon. So because books cost more, I've been buying less of them, which is probably a good thing. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, and book related videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and bonus videos on the weekends. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!